Hey guys, uh, good evening everyone. Matt and Lance here from the Project Offbeat podcast. Alam nyo na to, you know, we do this show so we can really interview people from all over the world, no? That's non-corporate career. So syempre, ginagawa natin to para ma-open up yung mga eyes ng mga corporate professionals natin that there are so much careers out there, no? Na nangyayari rin at ang dami nating pwedeng matutunan. Uh, but before that, Matt, kamusta ka pare? Um, you know, uh, ang dami na nating shoot for this season. I think tonight has been very, very exciting as well. Kamusta ka bro? I'm good. I'm good. Naka, nakapasok ako ng office for the first time in two plus years. So I'm very happy. It it seems like things are going back to normal. So hopefully it just goes on and on, di ba? Uh, buto na lang talaga in my work from home tayo. Uh, so yun, I, I, I think Matt, sobrang excited ako today because we're talking about a sport that I really, really nerded, nerd about. No? Parang all things about this sport, uh, bro, hindi ako masyadong binless ni God sa, sa height or sa, <laughs> sa, sa galing sa basketball. Pero I truly love the game no? uh, from everything. No? Uh, from the NBA to the PBA to, to the UAAP. I love the game and that's why I love today's episode as well. No? Ang goal natin today is to feature an off-beaten career of the professional basketball coaching. Diba? The career that's often behind the scenes of the most polished and finished players that you see in the court today. From developing the players and getting them to the gyms to battling with them on the courts through those game plans, diba? those strategies, and even more so as molding them to become mature men off the courts. Our guest today is the current collegiate coach for Adamson Soaring Falcons, one of the rising teams in the UAAP, who features star guard Jerome Lastimosa. He is very well known for his past experiences as a PBA coach for TNT Katropangiga and Blackwater Bossing, and his legendary tenure in FEU, where he won them a championship, by the way, in 2015. He is known to be a legend in building systems among the teams that he coached, changing locker room cultures dramatically and more. Natatandaan ko pa yung time na nanalo siya ng championship, no? Uh, I was rooting for the Tang brother here kasi Chinese ako, <laughs> pero <laughs> medyo, medyo masakit na natalo tayo at that uh, year, no? Our guest today is none other than legendary professional basketball coach, Coach Nash Rosella. And he joins the Project Offbeat podcast today to talk about the career of coaching and the sport that he loves. Welcome to the show, Coach. Kamusta ka? Hello, Lance. Uh, hello, Matt. Uh, thank you for having me no, sa show nyo. Um, well, congratulations uh, sa success ng, ano, ng podcast nyo. Uh, I'm good. Um, right now, well, we're in the middle of uh, preparation for the, the next UAAP season. Uh, medyo matagal pa. It will be in October. Uh, I, the last uh, I heard is that it will be in the first week of October. So, but right now, uh, because uh, somehow it is allowed to play a lot of games, so we are um, uh, we join a couple of uh, summer league uh, tournaments. So, yun na kami sa gitna ng preparation. Uh, so hope so. Of course, with the hope of. Uh, uh, getting a lot better for, in time for the October tournament. Nice. And coach, no? Um, coach, I guess before you, you know, talk all about these preparations and, and what's happening, can you share to us, coach, anong naramdaman mo after nung uh, UAP season natin last uh, season na, uh, um, first of all, na heartbreaker kaming mga atinista. <laughs> oh uh, my. <laughs> na step back jumper kami, coach, no? Uh, <laughs> And, and of course, Coach, share more sa amin um, how, how you felt, of course, in the strides that Adamson uh, were, was able to take uh, on that season. Yeah, maraming, maraming nasaktan, no? Uh, oh. Especially <laughs> mga Atenians na umaasa talaga. That, uh, ano ba yun? Pang-apat ba? Or ni Coach Tab? No? I, I think that would have been oh. the fourth. That would have been the fourth, yes. Oh. Or, yeah, consecutive championship uh, of Coach Tab. No? But... Uh, Nag-evolve talaga ang basketball, eh, no? So, congratulations to UP for stealing that championship. Uh, so, it will be a challenge for them moving forward, no? Kung paano nila masusustain at uh, madidepensahan yung championship. Um, well, for Ateneo and for us, no? Yung mga ibang schools, 
it will be doubly hard no? because alam naman natin na uh, once you win a championship uh, palakas ka lang ng palakas so mabigat 'yon para sa amin no uh, sa Adamson um, but of course we will do our part uh, hopefully could we we could give them a good challenge uh, in October So uh, I guess before we go into the the career of coaching I guess I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of our, our our Brody our fellow Athenian to the show uh Boss Philip no Boss Philip thank you for really connecting us with Coach Nas uh you know uh kamusta ka bro I think you are in the US right now no uh how are you doing bro Okay naman guys thank you na nasama na rin ako dahil uh dahil kay Coach Nas dito but yes uh <laughs> Okay naman ako, you know, just living life. Still following a lot of basketball for sure. Kahit for nandito sure. ako sa US, I still try to follow the UAP, PBA as much as possible. And Tito Nas knows that. I still, <laughs> you know, I still support them. I still support them even from here. No matter what time. Uh, especially nung UAP, nung finals, grabe, puyat talaga ako. Tapos biglang natalo talo tayo. So, <laughs> <laughs> para, para naman sa yung puyat ko. Pero... You know, I'm always I'm always uh happy to see uh good basketball being played and I'm also very proud of UP and how they played and you know, deserve naman nila yung championship na yan. I agree. Ganda. Actually, uh para sa mga listeners natin, uh Philip, we actually played before in college, no? And coach Nash, kwento ko na sa iyo. Ito playing coach namin to si Philip before, no? Mm-hmm. Meron pa siyang whiteboard dati na nagdo-draw up ng mga play. So Uh, bagay na bagay talaga itong episode natin for Boss Philip and of course for you, Coach Nash. Uh, I think, Coach Nash, why don't we, you know, start really dissecting this career. Coach Nash, can you talk to us about, you know, the 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 career of coaching, you know, in a, in a nutshell or in a gist, ano yung professional basketball coaching for you, Coach? Um, what are the things that people are already used to seeing in a basketball coach? Pero ano rin yung mga things na usually hindi nila nakikita? Siguro kasi ang hirap ano eh mahirap sagutin yung yung tanong mo because I'm kumbaga I'm from within no the coaching industry and it's siguro it would be better if you talk to somebody who is uh, looking from the outside no pero uh, sa act pagkakaintindi no when I talk to other people a lot of them think that um kumbaga coaching is uh, is an, uh, because pag pinap tinitignan nila, sabi nila ang mga coaches nagtatrabaho lang for a couple of hours, usually two, three hours, na no, mahaba na yung four hours, and that's what they see, no, that's what they see. But ay uh, ang hindi nila nakikita yung trabaho na sa likod nun, no, ah uh, after sure. the two to three hours of practice, malaki pang ginagawa ang coaches, eh, no, so uh, if you get to interview some other coaches and for sure sasabihin din nila yun yun sa inyo no na it's not just two to three hours it's actually more than the normal eight hour job no so from from practice yeah, you do scouting you study video pagkatapos may game sa gabi pupuntahan mo pa yon manonood ka pa ng live so those are the stuff that people don't see so yeah madali pero mahirap din That's coaching. That's coaching for me. Well, you have a lot of experience going to through different teams. What are the common qualities that each team looks for in a coach? Sa experience ko, no, uh, Matt. Well, of course, a lot of a lot of teams, no, and a lot of players would look for somebody na uh, they would respect. Pag nakakita sila ng tao na irerespeto nila, susundin nila. Eh. Uh, and in basketball, not just like in any other sport, that's the most important thing, no? Ma- mahirap kung coach ka na salita ka ng salita, pero walang naniniwala sa iyo, walang nakikinig sa iyo, walang sumusunod sa iyo, exactly. no? Ma- mabigat 'yon. <laughs> Medyo mabigat 'yon. And it's, it's really frustrating uh, from our end pag nakikita mo na uh, you see, you know, blank stares from from your players, no? Alam mo na hindi nila na-absorb yung, yung tinuturo mo all the more they won't be able to execute it uh, dun sa court. So, yun, medyo, yun ang, ano, yun ang challenging part uh, yeah. para sa amin. And uh, I, I, I think once they, once they find that person uh, whom they would respect and whom they would uh, follow, uh, yan, yung, ano yan eh, good things will, 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> adapt. Tapos siguro uh, success will follow. Yep. Coach, do you think age matters no, in terms of disrespect? Kasi para dumadami ngayon sa NBA and maybe sa PBA na kunwari si Steve Nash. I mean, he's just like kaedad lang ata nila sila, di ba? Yung parang third, wala pa nga atang 40 yun, no? Pero he, he was hired immediately by Brooklyn Nets, di ba? Meron bang uh, matter ang ang age, no? Paano kung medyo kaedad mo lang yung coach mo? Mahirap ba yun? Mahirap ba na respetuhin yung mga ganun na coaches? It's a good question, Lance, no? Uh, ang ganda ng, ano, no? Sa, ng, ng basketball ngay- ngayon. Because that's the direction a lot of uh, teams take now, no? Taking in younger coaches, no? You see in the NBA, pabata ng pabata. Even in the Philippines, no? Sa setup natin yeah. dito, mm-hmm. you see a lot of young coaches now. Um, I never believe that uh, age is a factor because you could uh, have great experience. Uh, kahit na bata kang coach, you'll, you'll, you'll even have uh, you know deeper understanding of the game even at a young age. So sa akin, hindi nagbamatter yun. No? Siguro just to give you a little background. I started coaching when I professionally when I was uh, 26 years old. So okay. I was uh, <laughs> yeah I was one of the younger coaches then no and then yeah going back to your question a lot of the players that we had then were about the same age as I was at saka yung iba sa kanila mas matanda sa akin. No so the thing that really helped me then was the fact that before I became the head coach of that um, team, naging assistant ako for one mm. or one or two years. No, so of course I've established um, relationships with with those players. Na. So yeah, age I don't think it's a, it's an issue when it comes to coaching. It's more the experience, yeah, and mm. uh, siguro yung lalim ng pagkakaalam mo sa basketball. Ang ganda. Ang ga- Pero coach, hindi hindi naman, hindi naman kailangan na parang ma-connections ka no. Yung para kapag pag kapag pagiging coach, kailangan ba na malapit ka sa management or malapit ka sa players? Kasi coach fan na, fan na fan ako ng Chicago Bulls. Tapos yung coach namin medyo kabata rin no, medyo may medyo may ilang ilang edad lang. Tapos uh, laging sinasabi na he is called this player coach no. Parang everyone loves him, you know, he knows how to develop the best in players, 'di ba? But you also see these coaches naman na may mga veteranong talaga knows all the strategies in the playbook no. Coach in terms of balancing those out um ano mas tingin mo mas maka mas mahalaga? Yung player development, knowing how to relate to people or talagang basketball mind ka. Uh, you need to you need to have both uh, actually in coaching. Mm. <clears throat> uh, the beauty about the beauty about coaching ano in a lot of you, you, makikita mo you, you go you you look at different leagues you look at uh, kahit iba-ibang bansa no syempre hindi naman lahat ng coaches perfect no that would have both um ang maganda sa coaching is that it's not just about the head coach no it's about the coaching staff so mm-hmm. kung whatever your strength is as a head coach at nakikita mo may pagkukulang ka sa ibang aspeto then you look for reinforcements no kaya meron ka ring assistant coach so that's the that's how i do things eh. that's my approach uh, alam ko naman na in perfect may akong bagay whatever my weaknesses are tinusubukan ko punuan ng mga uh, assistant coaches na meron kami uh, coach nash uh, you obviously are a very uh, experienced coach uh, you've coached in the collegiate you've coached in professional like in the pba um, can you help us decipher no ano ba yung difference or yung pagkakaiba ng collegiate level versus yung national or well nas- not national but like yung yung professional league level diba uh, well a lot of ano, a lot of people ask that Matt, no? but yeah sa ang tingin ko uh, well ba- to me basketball is basketball no uh, kahit anong level ang kino-coach mo it's to me it's all the same if if you really want to look for siguro one big difference between the two ang nakikita ko is that it's easier somehow to manage uh, 
players in college, no? As opposed to sa professional level. As bata pa, no? Uh, yes. <laughs> as, bata. as bata pa, minsan, uh, kahit anong sabihin mo, susundin lang, mm-hmm. no? Uh, like in in the pro ranks, uh, sometimes when you ask them to do this, may, que- may question mark na agad, hindi pa nagsisimula. So that's a big challenge for professional coaches. Uh, sa college naman, uh, para bang by default may paniniwala na kagad sila uh, sa head coach no so that's that's the only difference that i see no but uh, the game in general parang sa akin na uh, pareho lang naisip ko lang no parang kapag uh, you're coaching younger kids no um how important is it um para sa yung mga education nila no parang uh, di ba i can imagine if you're coaching players na sa college pa Parang at the back of their mind, siguro 50% ng iniisip din nila is yung kung papasaba sila sa SEM nila, di ba? Uh, unlike kapag sa PBA, <laughs> siguro pamilya. Tama ba? Pamilya ba yung iniisip nila? Or Baka siguro, salary. Oh, or, or parang adulthood, no? Adulthood or uh, unang pamilya nila. Hindi ko alam, Coach. Um, how do you navigate through this um, through this uh, mindsets for your for your uh, players? Yeah, different tano tama kayo different priorities for uh, yeah. for players no uh, pag nasa professional ka na tama no depende kung how what stage you are in uh, in the pro ranks na no? yung mga rookies yung mga bago usually they get to the PBA uh, single pa lang sila no so medyo sarili pa lang nila iniisip mm. nila for for <laughs> some of them they have younger kids no so ang ibig sabihin ba ang responsibilities nila uh, mas maliit pa no but uh, as they stay longer in the PBA mas lumalaki mga anak mas malaki responsibilities tama ay iniisip niyo no hindi lang just basketball iniisip kundi paano ko na susuportahan yung pamilya ko so ganyan exactly. nga sa ganyan sa PBA unlike in college no ang sabi niyo nga uh, aside from playing it's just their schooling no yung studies no and we we always put emphasis on that uh, because we all know that Uh, well, basketball is number one, not forever. Pangalawa, basketball mm-hmm. as a career yeah. is not for everyone. So a lot of people, basketball players, could be successful in the college level, no? pero hindi na dumederecho. And something that we want them to really embrace is having, having a fallback. No, na pag hindi sila naging successful as basketball players, no, meron pa rin, I mean, kampante pa rin sila na kaya nilang buhay yung pamilya nila because they graduate from the university. No, they have uh, bigger chances sa uh, whatever field they choose. No? Corporate. If it could be corporate, then sana maging successful sila. Parang ang dami, actually, Coach, parang ang lumalabas dito, parang ang dami nyo rin kailangan i-consider Um, it's not just molding a player physically, no. Parang how how athletic he is, how ready or game shape he is before the game. Mm-hmm. Nisip mo rin mentally ba? May inisip pa siyang iba, de ba? May distracted ba siya ngayon sa sa media, sa nababasa niya sa social media, no? Parang may 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 mga ganong aspect, no. Talaga na kailangan maisip ng ng isang coach. Yes, that's you know, that's a challenge for us now because 15, 20 years ago. Hindi Wala namin naging problema yan. Oo nga eh. Ngayon eh, bago pa pumunta sa game, may nasa telepono, nakikita nila yung Grabe. mga yung bang adoration ng fans. Di ba? May sinasabal sa kanila. Ang, ang kabalik tara naman, sometimes when they perform poorly, naku, ang dami ng messages. O ba't ganyan ang laro mo? Exactly. It gets into their minds. That's the... Uh, kung, kung ang nakikita ko naman, kung yun ang problema ng coaches, it's now a problem of athletes, no? of, of mm-hmm. um, not just college players, but even professional players. No? Because sometimes, um, pag hindi stable ang mind mo, then you will fall into a trap of trying to uh, please no? yung people around you, yung social media. So, hindi maganda yun. Uh, you, not just in the Philippines, no? sa NBA, ganyan din. Ano? Mas, mas, yeah. mas so, matimbang pa ang social media sa players. Mm-mm. 
Tsaka iniisip mo pa yung 2K rating mo sa 2K, no? <laughs> <laughs> May mga ganyan pa silang ano ngayon, coach, eh, no? Pero alam mo, Lance, Zero... uh, Yes, yes, coach. Yeah. Go ahead. Siguro Go ahead, if coach. I could add, no? Kanina kasi yung pinag-usapan natin about studies, no? Just just playing and stuff. and uh, studying for for college players. Alam mo, nabigla ko kasi naalala no, yung some of my players na hindi lang basketball at saka syempre depende kung nasang eskwela ka no. And mm-hmm. ako I I have been exposed to uh, bas- basketball programs that re- that recruit players from the provinces. No? Wow. So mm-hmm. hindi yeah. katulad kayo, syempre exposed kayo sa Ateneo and a lot of your uh, players sa Ateneo come from Uh, well-to-do families no, na uh, okay. kayang mabuhay ng, ng mga bata na ang iniisip lang nila is ano bang anong klaseng burger ang kakainin ko mamayang hapon. Diba? Parang ganun lang iniisip yeah. nila. No? Yeah. But the players that we have uh, specifically no, nung, nung nasa FEO ako at saka ngayon nasa Adams ano, or a lot of them are from the provinces. No? Not, not everyone uh, komportable ang buhay. So Banda. naikwento ko lang dahil nga yeah, yung yung topic yung question mo kanina no and i have this specific player uh, during the middle of the season ang iniisip niya yung yung sustento ba ng ano <laughs> paano ko tutulungan yung pamilya ko no? and for for a lot of them they they get minimal allowances no tapos yung minimal allowance ay ipapadala pa nila sa sa magulang nila so ang dami ang daming pumapasok sa utak ng ng mga players no and as coaches doon kami papasok no uh, how to stabilize that no? not just right. the mind but the the mm-hmm. yung, the whole the totality no ng pagkatao nila right coach parang may naalala kung uh, you did an interview in one sport where you said you know the priority that you have for these student athletes is exactly that their student athletes the priority is education diba i guess can you talk about what it means to develop a player. Do you still develop a player when you're in the professional leagues already? Is there is there any development or is it just strictly basketball uh, related? Well, not uh, no, not, not just basketball related no? because um, e- even in the pro level, you know, in the pro ranks, you'll be exposed to a lot of different personalities. No? You may mga veterano na hindi na kailangan alalayan no na basketball lang ang kailangan yung pag-usapan but there are some no, especially the younger ones that you really need to guide uh, ibig sabihin pati sa buhay no kailangan mo silang uh, alalayan and not not all of them uh, have been exposed uh, to the right coaches no uh, syempre di ba iba ang background nila na exposed sa isang coach na naalalayan sila pero meron din iba mm-hmm. sa kanila na uh, basketball lang ang itinuro sa kanila while they were in yeah. uh, college. So ngayon, doon ka naman papasok when they get to the pro ranks and na-expose sa'yo uh, na nakita mo yun ang kulang then kailangan mo din sila alalayan. No? Uh, but sa college, it's really more lahat eh <laughs> lahat mm-hmm. no from from yeah from education you really have to emphasize that education yung pagkatao nila no yeah. uh, what is right and what is wrong <laughs> doon doon ka papasok you really yeah. have to you guide them gusto lang sana namin sa mga nakikinig sa amin ngayon that wants to become a coach no in in your day to day Uh, siguro kahit bigyan mo kami ng percentages ng paghiwa ng araw mo, no? what does it take? No? Ano yung mga processes mo? Ano yung mga ginagawa mo araw-araw as a coach? Uh, maybe on a game day and on a non-game day, di ba? Um, di ba? How much time do you allot for someone like Jerome Lastimosa? Or how much time do you allot for handling media or handling management? No? Um, can you talk to us about a day-to-day of a professional basketball coach? Well, earlier I told you, no, the the number of hours that is yeah. required, no, sa sa buhay ng coach, no. I I think I'm at the I I think I'm at that level now, no, na hindi na ganon ka karaming oras yung kailangan ko para sa. <laughs> Medyo hands off na, Medyo hands yeah. off na ngayon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I I really believe in um yeah I I really believe in empowerment, no, and. The reason behind it is that I'm all for the growth of my uh, coaches now because I know and I believe that soon they will be head coaches too. No, ang ang ayaw na ayaw natin is they get to that position na hindi sila handa. 
Right. You know? So how do you prepare them? By giving them actual experience no, in coaching. And, uh, That's why now, di ba kanina sabi ko sa inyo, we're in the middle of preparation for summer tournaments. No? We, we have, I think, line, we, we have three tournaments lined up or three or four tournaments lined up for this uh, preseason. And two or three of those, I let my assistant coaches handle the, the teams. No? Kung baga sa NBA, parang uh, summer league. No? Summer league. So summer league. NBA summer yep. league. Okay, so I let them coach. And then I, I put myself in a better perspective because nasa likod lang ako, pinapanood ko. So mas marami ako nakikita uh, by doing that. And then I guide them. No? Uh, so nakakatawa because just a couple of days ago, one of, one of the, our assistant coaches na humahandle ng team, no? ang tanong niya, Coach, how do you do this? No? So he was talking about uh, rotations ng players. So gano'n. So... So, it explain ko sa kanya, no? And I, I, kumbaga, I let him experience that during the game. I let him fail during the game because that's, that's how you learn it, di ba? Experiential learning. So, that's how we do, no? Um, things dun sa, sa aming staff, no? But again, going back to your question, uh, paano ba yung araw, no? When we practice, no? When we practice, we usually have a three to four hour schedule. Basta may slot lang kami na kita. And a lot of those... Hours are for individual improvements no so more on more on skill work Talaga. system work mm. so more ganon because i i really believe in short practices eh. so when i uh, combine everyone gusto ko mga 1 hour max 1 hour 30 minutes na practice lang eh. so so ganun lang Talaga. so mm. i let so ibig sabihin the other times i let the assistant coaches the the whole coaching staff Yeah. I see. Kala ko, coach, parang yung mga training natin, m- madalas scrimmages. Hindi pala, no? More of, magpalaking katawa muna or, or, you know, <laughs> iron, up your, iron up your shooting or, talaga. So, yung mga scrimmages, coach, ano lang yan? Medyo madalang lang yan, no? Um, well, hindi naman madalang because kailangan nila yan, eh, no? But, maraming klase ng scrimmages, eh. You, you, you'll have uh, five on five na You know, by time, no? Kung nari, three minutes scrimmage, five minutes scrimmage, no? Yeah. Uh, usually, like, ang Ateneo, sila Coach Norman, ang hilig nila is parang end of week, they do inter-scrimmage, so the Ateneo yeah. nila yung team sila, no? And then, other, yung coaches will handle. Yan, yeah, laban lang sila. Parang buong game yon, 40 minutes yep. scrimmage. But we, ako, we do a lot of, uh, we call that, uh, we call this controlled scrimmages, no? Uh, especially sa amin na uh, we're into teaching no? yung mga emphasis points ano lang kami parang ilang possessions lang kanyari tatlo mm. hanggang limang takbuhan lang okay we mm. start we start we start the possession with let's say a certain play ganyan and then takbo tayo sa kabila balik tayo dito balik tayo matapos tayo sa kabila so that after one run of three possessions three to five possessions Then we get to emphasize mga things na nangyari. Yeah. Sa tatlo, apat, limang possessions. Ayan. And that's... Ay, uh, ang paninawala ko kasi na mas na-absorb ng players. No? Kasi ang hirap when, when you ask them, oh, naalala mo yung nangyari kanina? Eh, 30 minutes ago na yun, di ba? Wala nang maalala yung player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to two possessions ago. Yeah. I see, I see. Coach, paano naman kapag... Uh, yung mga gustong maging coach ngayon, how much should they be trained in terms of handling media? Kasi di ba, parang napapansin ko, yung mga coach, sila yung laging humaharap sa mga, alam mo yun, sa media, sa mga fans na inis na inis na, di ba? And you always get most of the blame. Di ba, na parang, ano ba naman yan? Ba't di nilalaro ni coach na si ano and, and ano, di ba? <laughs> how much should they be trained? May, may mga ano ba kayo dito, coach? May mga training din ba kayo dito? Or lahat to experience lang? Al- alam mo may may iba akong kilala na they they let somebody else do that for them. No? Oh, I don't know if they hire professional. Ano ba tawag yeah. sa ganun? Spokesperson or Spokesperson. Social mm. social media manager. Uh, <laughs> manager, iba ganun. Yeah. No? Yeah. So kung may budget sila, they do that. No, but uh ako I I'd rather really not spend 
so much time dun sa social media no mm, it's not I that see. hindi ko pinapansin no i i see that i read pero i don't let it get into me marami pa nga diyan magpo-personal message siya no secret lang natin, <laughs> talaga talaga <laughs> personal message minsan bumurahin ka no sabihin nila observations sa coaching mo or dun sa game uh, pero minsan kailangan mo lang palagpasin eh palagpasin because alam mo naman ko ano yung yung ginagawa nyo and ano yung tamang ginagawa nyo. Pero coach, I guess just to follow up on that, no, who do you get constructive feedback from? Kasi diba, okay, uh, you don't want to listen to all the social media chatter, diba? Pero sino ba yung nag, nag-criticize na you will actually listen yeah. and kind of <laughs> apply that feedback oh, to, uh. sige, ayus ko nga yung rotation ko or yung game plan or what not, diba? <laughs> Oo nga coach, ako nga lagi ko tinatag yung coach ng Bulls kasi gusto ko mabasa niyo yung, <laughs> yung constructive criticism ko sa kanila. <laughs> Pero yeah. mukhang din niyo pala pinapansin yung coach. No, for, for sure they also see that, no? Or at least they let somebody read that for them, no? Tapos siguro, ano tawag na fini filter? Mm-hmm. Maybe they filter that and then papasa nila kay coach. No? Maybe that's that's how they do things. Siguro to answer your question, Matt, you need to have a, you know, a small circle of, uh, kumbaga, just like in life, diba? you need to have a small mm, yeah. circle of friends. Yeah. Na, na mo. So sa amin, we have a circle of coaches. No, na, yun lang yung, yeah. ano, ano nakita mo dun sa game. Okay. Sometimes we message them or panuuri mo, kalaban namin si ganyan. Maybe text me or, you know, feedback. Yeah. And that's how we do things. But myself, si Coach Olsen, no? who's now with FEU. FEU. Uh, ganyan kami mm-hmm. dalawa. Uh, sometimes, uh, we just send uh, through a text. Pwede ka ba? Magkapi tayo. So, alam ko na yun. Meron na mga concerns. <laughs> and, uh, siguro, hindi ko alam kung paniniwalaan yun. No? And one of the the coaches, no, na minsan, na uh, ka-message ko, is the dad of Philip. No, mm. he was, ano, he was, I was about to ask, ka. kasali ba si Philip sa circle na yun? <laughs> kasi yung, <laughs> Kaya palang galing ni Philip eh, no? Ay. <laughs> kasi yung dad ni... Hindi ako siya. <laughs> yung dad ni Philip is uh, our kuya, no? So, so sa mga cousins namin, mas, mas nakatatanda siya sa amin. So when we were, when we started playing at a young age, si Kuya Bambi, no? Uh, siya yung nagko-coach amin. So parang si Philip din sa inyo, no? he was our playing coach. Grabe. So gano'n. So, uh, alam mo na, and there's, there's always wisdom. In, especially in older people. No? So si, <laughs> si Kuya Bambi is older than us, siguro by uh, maybe 10 years. So mas marami na siyang na-experience sa uh, basketball. Uh, coach, I, I just want to share, no? back in 2015, yung... Siguro last chance ni Kiefer Avena to win a championship. Uh, your team basically uh, destroyed the hopes for that Ateneo team. And sobrang na-heartbreak ako nun kasi sabi ko, hala, wala nang, <laughs> siguro wala nang pag-asa yung Ateneo maka-championship in my, ano, in my college, college, uh, college years. So, um, can you explain uh, if, like, is that the best team you've ever coached? How how do you know if you're coaching at the highest level if everything's functioning well, di ba? Uh, kung sa corporate, I think what they call it is KPIs, no? Ano yung key performance indicators that's telling you na, okay, everything's going good, ev- all, everyone's on the same page. So everyone's functioning the way I want it to. Matt, ito yung 2015 was the tip-in of, ano, no? of Mark Bello. Tama ba? Oo, oh, 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 uh, yan yung in, siguro last second what uh, last second shot uh, tapos yeah, yeah yung tip in na uh, where uh, kailangan talaga uh, i-remind sa atin ni Coach ah. Kasi dalawa lang dalawa lang yun eh. 2014 I think was the three point of Belo against Lasal. Yeah, no? the quarter. And then 2015 <laughs> was the tip in of Belo. Okay. So yun lang yun lang lagi kong basis eh. So kasi mabilis ako makakalimot. So pag pag nami-mention niya yan, yan sa so, so start ko siya i-recall no. But, you know, as a coach, um, I, I would always say that I was really fortunate you know, to have a good group of people you know, itong 2015. We started really, I, I started my coaching in FU 2000, late 2012. Eh? So I started 2013 season. So that was already our third uh, season together. 
So siguro no uh, nakatulong lang na mahaba na yung panahon na magsasa- na magka- magkakasama kami no right. and 2015 was the year na half of the team played their last They're just like Kiefer no yeah. kasi kabatch yeah. si Kiefer lahat yan eh si Belo Pogoy Tolomia uh, Inigo Escoto Tamsi yan sabay-sabay yan uh, nawala 6-7 and then I, I think there's one more no na sabay-sabay sila lang nawala. So, kumbaga ripe na talaga sila. 2015 was the yep. year for us. That's why tingin ko, no, nag-mature na sila and they made kumbaga they made my job a lot easier, especially in 2015. Sila ba yung pinaka anong tanong mo? Pinaka <laughs> Is that the best team you've coached? The the best team that I've coached? Uh, I can't really say. No, because uh, as a as a person, as a coach, um, enjoyment really is uh, you know having relationships with ah, my players. And usually, it's, yeah, if if I build um, relationships with with my players, then that's my that's yep. my success. No, uh, I always say na if ten years, fifteen years, or twenty years after you've coached them, they still send you a text, they still call you, no, they still ask you for to have coffee. Then alam mo na naging successful ka, no? Yep. Yan ang like kong ano, like kong uh, kumbaga batayan. No? Pag, pag nag-message, coach, can I get you as uh, Ninong, no? Nung anak ko or as Yun. Ninong na kasalaman. Uh-huh. Then alam mo na nakapag-build ka ng maganda at nakapag-tanim ka ng maganda sa kanila. That's coach, more than the championship. Uh-huh. So yung championship, syempre, hindi uh-huh. sinasabi na ayaw ko. Gusto ko din, di ba? <laughs> And to me, that's uh, it's a bonus, no? And that's something uh, you really look forward to. So, siguro coach yan talaga hindi maintindihan ng mga fans no kasi for them um let's say a coach goes on a losing streak no tapos pinakawalan siya ng isang team for them it's it's like a failure of a coach already pero you know yung nasabi mo kanina if you've built a relationship with at least uh, a few of those people that's that's a huge success di ba na hindi mo na talaga malilimutan in your life no parang naging ninong ka sa kanila, naging tatay ka sa kanila. You always go back lines to ano eh. Uh, what is your measure of success? So iba mm. magkakaiba naman talaga Ganda. tayo, no? So so for some for some people ang measure of success is championships, 'di ba? For some it's relationships, 'di ba? I don't know for for other people, no, kung ano pa yung baka yung iba ano lang, no? It's actually championships but just making it to the final four, that's already success for yeah. them then. Yeah. Yeah. So iba-iba naman din talaga. Ang ganda. Um, coach, uh, you earlier mentioned you started coaching at the young age of 26. That's like two years, three years, uh, one year um, ng mga edad namin ngayon, no, Coach. Uh, coach, how did you really discover the world of of coaching? You know, How did you get started here? Because ever since bata ka ba, Coach, alam mo na na, alam mo, bagay ako maging basketball coach eh. Or merong maraming moments along the way na nalinawagan ka na Pwede pala ako maging coach, no? Uh, pwede pala ako maging uh, professional coach. Never in my wildest dreams, no, na naisip ko na mag-coach ako, especially professionally, you know? especially at this level. Maybe dun sa sa barangay, no? Uh, pwede, ayun, naisip mo pa yun dati. And 25 years ago, uh, it was a reality, no? Yung coaching in the barangay level. Pero uh, what really opened up sa akin dito sa sa coaching, and I won't, deny it no uh, it really helped that si coach Olsen uh, was in the PBA then no syempre yeah. he has built mm-hmm. uh, relationships also no with some with some people and so it's really a mixture of that no yung yep. yung influ- somehow influenced the coach Olsen mm-hmm. or at least a connection diba may counting may counting connection but uh, it's a mixture of that and tadhana Oh, yung tadhana. Kung para sa iyo, para sa iyo talaga 'yan, eh, no? Grabe. Um, eh, well, nakakatawa lang kasi yung story, ano, because I started in 1998 kay Coach Binky Fabis, no? And my intention then was not really to coach, no, or to be part of the team. Ang sabi ko lang noon, nagpaalam lang ako because si Coach Binky was an assistant coach in the PBA then before he became the head coach at NBA. Mm. So nung nalaman ko na siya yung coach, Uh, I was uh, out of a job noon. Eh. Uh, I resigned from the corporate world. I used to work in a bank. So sabi ko, teka lang, 
baka pwede naman ako magpa-condition, no? So, nag-message na ako kay Coach Binky. Coach Binky, baka pwede makainsay sa inyo. And that's how I started, no? Uh, gusto ko lang makondisyon, not really play uh, competitively. Pero after uh, one week, no? Ang, ang tanong sa akin ni Coach Binky was that, are you interested in coaching? So, yun pala, days wow. before, somebody resigned from his staff. So, yun lang. That opportunity things for me. No? Yes, that's an yeah. opportunity I, I grabbed. Uh, sabi ko, sige, coach, as long as mag-iisip ako dun sa ibibigay mo, trabaho, sabi ko sa kanya. And then, ang hinahanap niya nun was a scout. So, that's how, ano. So, everything was taught to me by uh, Coach Binky. So, natutunan ko lahat. And then, I just grew over the years. Grabe. Bagay na bagay pala to si Coach Nash sa show natin kasi ginadig ginagawa namin Coach Nash no para kinakausap namin yung mga taong gusto nang tumakas sa corporate. At uh, <laughs> <laughs> yung, yung kwento mo is perfect na perfect for that no. Um, I kala ko Coach, uh, all coaches would have a tenured long, long, long basketball uh, experience bago sila makonsider, di ba? Uh, ang ganda ng, ng kwento mo on that one, Coach. just want to ask, right. when you were taking up that assistant coaching job, would you say na qualified ka in the strictest sense? No. No. Kasi when you talk about experience, I never had uh, mm. coaching experience. Lalo na sa, at that level because that MBA back then was considered professional. no? Yeah. But you know, just like in life, all you need to be is, you know, no? and uh, at the time when he asked me that, so I gave it a thought. Uh, nag na interesado naman ako, no? Mm-hmm. And uh, I just wanted to be available and I was open to learning, no? Mm-hmm. Um, yun yung, I, I think that that's the more, most important thing, you know, if, if you really want it and if you are willing to learn, no? So, mm-hmm. bukas na bukas ako noon, nung mga panahon na yun, I was really, I was 26 years old, uh, worked, uh, well, I worked in the corporate world for about four years, you know, so after that, I was really, sabi ko, hindi ako pang corporate, no, hindi ko kaya yung 8 to 5 na trabaho. Yeah. So, whatever comes, I, I I was really open, no, bukas na bukas, so pasok lang, pasok, absorb, absorb, yeah, and then, ano na, filter, ganyan. Yeah. Coach, tumakas ka sa 8 to 5, pero yung coaching ngayon, naging 6 to 9 PMR. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tinanong mo na to kanina eh. And, uh, tinanong mo na to kanina, Lance. And since I've mentioned Coach Binky, no? uh, yeah. I just give you, ano, uh, siguro ito na yung sagot dun sa tanong mo kanina. No? Because presently, sabi ko sa'yo, konti na lang yung number of hours ko. No? But yeah. in the late 90s, no? ganito ang isura ko. We practice 9 to 12. Yeah. In the morning. So practice 9 to 12 in the morning. After practice, kakain lang kami lunch. After that, we go to our uh, office. The yeah. um, office namin then was uh, like a condo. No? Sa, sa profes- that is a PBA. Ganun, eh. May condo dyan somewhere. Pupunta kami doon. We watch video. So yeah. ilang hours nood lang kami. Nood, nood, nood kami. And then ang PBA games would start 4 or 5 p.m. Hanggang 10 yeah. o'clock. So after we do video, pupunta kami dun sa venue. So manonood pa kami ng live games. That's crazy. So makaka-uwi kami. And just imagine, di ba? You'll be home 10, 11, ganyan. Grabe. And then tulog ka. The next day, ganun na naman. So that's your routine. <laughs> no? Pero, you know, babalik-balikan mo because dun ka natuto eh. No? Dun ka. Exactly. And that's that's something that I I want younger coaches to go through. Yeah. Because uh, dun sila matuto. So, you know, it's it's a different world now because of technology. Yeah. Iba na yung ngayon dahil lahat may access na sila sa games eh. hindi mo na kailangan puntahan. So, pipindot ka lang ng konti na doon yung game sa harap mo. Pipindot ka lang ng konti and doon yung teaching sa harap mo. Yep. So, ganda. Um, siguro coach, uh, last question, no? Coach, bakit nagko-coach si Coach Nash Rosela? Um, Why is he doing this? What is his purpose on why he continues to do this from the young age of 26 to where he is now, bakit patuloy lang ang pagko-coaching ni Coach Nash? Because I like leading people. No? I like guiding people. So sa akin, that's my enjoyment. Eh. Um, pag nakikita ko Ganda. 
na gumaganda ang direksyon ng buhay nila. Especially young people, no? If you're in college, ibigay mo sila ng tamang, dadali mo sila sa tamang direksyon. And once you see see them getting better, uh, kahit na small steps lang, no, getting better, uh, that's already an enjoyment uh, sa akin. Eh, no? So, pag nakita ko na, siguro, if, if, if you want a little bit of detail, no? Minsan sa schooling, no? Because sabi ko nga sa'yo kanina, iba-iba yung background natin. Uh, ng players na kinukuha natin, a lot of our players we get from the provinces. No? So, syempre, you talk about academics. Di ba? Mas huli ng konti kung saan sila nagagaling. No? Not everyone mas maganda. So, the habit of uh, studying, ganyan-ganyan, di ba? So, unti-unti mo rin sila i-mold. No? Minsan yung background nila, uh, just Minsan yung manners lang ba? Nandun galing sila sa ibang lugar. No? Not just the province, even here in Manila. But they were exposed to a different kind of teaching. So now, pagdating sa'yo, sasabihin mo sa And then, that's the only time they realize, ah, mali pala yung ginagawa ko dati. Akala ko, tama, coach. Pag nakita mo nagbabago na, then, yun na yun. Uh, yeah. that, that's the, ano, that's, that, again, that's my enjoyment. Nakakatawa, Coach, na parang akala mo yung mga movies na like Coach Carter or yung recently sa Netflix yung Hustle, akala mo parang cliche-cliche lang yun. No? Pero totoo pala na yung mga coaches, yan yung greatest joy nila. Instead of just like winning games, you know, winning championships, it's really seeing their their players grow into the man that they can be. no Talagang... Wow! <laughs> diba? Y- y- yan talaga hindi nakikita ng fans eh. Ah, uh, 'di ba? Yan talaga yung makabuluhan sa isang pagiging isang coach. Uh, para naman sa mga nakikinig ngayon, no? Um, in case may iba sa kanila na gustong maging coach, um, meron ka bang uh, advice on how to get get started? Ah, uh, meron ba sarang program na pwedeng samahan? Meron ba sarang ibang mga uh, mentors na pwedeng uh, lapitan? Meron bang mga ganon? Um, again, um, ngayon, sabi ko nga, eh, technology, eh, you, they just have to take advantage. No? Uh, marami ngayon na mga, what do you call this, mga coaching groups no? uh, all over in Facebook. In, again, hanap lang sila minsan, eh, lang, pumasok lang sila doon. Eh. And then mamaya makita nila, oh, meron palang coaching clinic si ganyan. Ah, no? And yeah. ang, ang, ang maganda lang kasi ngayon now is that Right now, everybody shares. Eh. So, yung mga coaches ngayon, no? yeah. uh, meron pa nga mga nag-organize. Na. There, young, there are a lot of young, younger coaches now that organize. No? And then, invite nila yung mga mas matatandang coaches. Can you be our guest speaker? Teach this to the younger younger ones. Yan. So, dyan na yan. Papasok na. So, maraming available ngayon na uh, ganyan. Pwede nilang silipin yun. Uh, that's, that's one. Number two is... Um, Invest in learning. Again, you talk about technology. Andiyan na sa YouTube ako, yun na lang din ang ginagawa ko ngayon. No? Talaga? Uh, yeah. Because 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you kailangan mo lumipad. No? Punta kang US para mag-aaral. Grabe. Diba? Ngayon, andiyan eh. Yung, yung pinuntahan mo sa US, mapapanood mo na dun sa, mm. sa video ngayon. No? Papanood mm. mo na lang. So ngayon, it's maraming available. Even the, the website of FIBA. No? Uh, mm. nandun lahat ng clinics yeah. ng uh, foreign coaches nandun yan eh. so you could study no, piliin mo na ano yung gusto Biling. mo matutunan anong klaseng philosophy ang uh, mag-a-apply sa akin no? yun ang yung panoorin mo so many videos na available <laughs> no? <laughs> magsasawa ka actually yeah minsan malulunod ka hindi mo alam kung anong gusto mong simulan coach nanood ka ba ng mga ano mga clinics nila pap Greg Popovich. May mga ganun ba? Steve Kerr. Meron. Hindi <laughs> ko alam kung nagagawa ba sila na clinic. Ah, meron ba? Ah. Yeah, they, they get invited sa, yeah, si, yeah, si Pop, meron siya sa FIBA, no? pupunta sila ng Italy, basta Europe, pupunta sila ah, gata, so mag-speak sila for 45 minutes, one hour. No, but uh, kay Pop is more, uh, again, yung experience niya, no? yun yung sinashare niya. But for the other coaches, no? especially yung mga nahawakan niya, yan, meron silang mga uh, clinics na nagtuturo sila. It's more into system than sa, sa iba naman. But that's what you want naman from Pop, di ba? Yung kanyang, yung lali no experience niya, exactly. no, no wisdom niya. Coach, right, since man. we're talking about like Coach Kerr and uh, Popovich, um, are there coaches that you take inspiration from? Siguro, it's yung, uh, whether it be in the NBA, PBA, UAP. Ayan. There's no, ano, There's no one specific coach na talaga I, I really follow. Mm-hmm. No? Um, 
<clears throat> kasi uh, at an early stage in my coaching career that's that's something i learned no uh, you, again you open it up yourself to different coaches no you see you look pasok mo sa utak mo no you filter and then kung ano yung gusto mo sa kanila yun ang i-retain mo no and then that becomes who you are as a coach mahirap kasi maging clone lang ba nagkopya ka ng kopya ng kopya sa isang coach Uh-oh. no uh, mas maganda yeah, yeah. if you are you become a collection of different coaches ganda. Um, si Coach Pop, actually, yeah, I, I, I really follow him. Pero natutuwa lang ako because when I read mga articles about him, no, nakikita ko yung, yung influence sa tao, yung, yep. yung mm. uh, importance of relationships to Coach Pop. Ganon din pala. So, yeah, natuwa lang ako na somebody like him no? uh, pwede maging influence. Yeah. Parang lahat nga ng assistant coaches ni Coach Pop, nagiging coach, no? Parang it, it, it goes to show this guy is more than just a coach. He's, he's also a mentor to all of these assistant coaches talaga. We, we, we did this podcast, no? Para kinakausap namin yung mga corporate professionals ngayon na they're doing their 85s. They're doing their, their day-to-day jobs, no? Sa tingin mo ba, coach, mga corporate professional ngayon, anong pwedeng matutunan sa isang basketball coach like you? Um, a basketball leader, a basketball mind like you, is there anything that they can adapt from your mentality? You'll hear me say a lot about relationships. No? Um, and I believe that in any kind of setup, it's really about relationships. No? Uh, corporate ka man o hindi. Uh, importante is, again, yung pagsasamahan nyo. No? Uh, and sa akin, that, that's one of the reasons why somehow I, I become uh, successful. No? Uh, so, yeah. kung kumbaga, hindi na lang successful. Because that's one of the reasons why I am still here coaching no, after almost 25 years. No? And that's because of the relationships I built. No? That at least the belief that relationships are important. So you go into a corporate setup, it's the same. Now, for people to enjoy working, no, kailangan meron talagang relationships. No? Kasi because pag hindi, hindi sila masaya. Yeah. Okay. yeah. After one year, ayoko na dito, mm-hmm. alis na ako. Saan-saan kaya ako pupunta? Ganon, di ba? But sometimes, no, even if they don't enjoy the work, per se, but because of the relationships sa mga tao, exactly. no, sa exactly. same level or even sometimes sa uh, one level up, minsan napipigilan sila umalis. No? That makes them say, and that happened to me. Actually, so, diba, I told you earlier na I, I worked four years in corporate. No? Uh, I think second or third year ko pa lang, hindi na ako nag enjoy eh. no? But because tao. of the friends, yung mga tao, well, <clears throat> napilitan ako magstay ng another year. So it's to me it's if, if there's one takeaway it's it's really the importance of relationships. Siguro coach hula ko lang to no. Sila Belo, sila Pogoy, tumagal yan sa college dahil sa iyo. Tingin niyo coach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ano rin eh. Ah uh, well, pwedeng hindi no. <laughs> Because ano talaga sila. Eh. Uh, I, I I I we all felt no not just myself no even the the whole coaching staff and the management no, they really felt na uh, it was uh, for their best interest if they would stay longer say if you know and that's something that si Bello realized sabi niya coach kung nagmadali pala ako and na line up ako ng maaga sa if you hindi pala ako umabot sa 2015 na team sabi niya but because i sat out for I think one or two years nung bago pa lang siya sa FU, umabot siya sa 15. And yun yung nag, ano eh, uh, nagdala sa kung nasan siya ngayon. No? If he wasn't part of that, I don't know where he is now. But but because of that, yeah, now he's in the PBA, successful. He was part of, or a lot of them were part of the Gilas program. No? Si Pogoy, even up to now, is being considered sa Gilas. No? So, yep. yeah. Coach Nash, that's about it for our very first part of the show. Thank you, Coach Nash, for taking us off the beaten path. Uh, nakaka-inspire na maging isang coach then like you. You know, you, you, you somehow 
uh, I don't know kung ako lang ba or Matt let me know no parang 80% or 90% of the show was about you talking about relationships you talking about molding people more than just the basketball sense and I think yun yung mga talagang kailangan marinig ng mga listeners namin na you know a coach is like a, a teacher a, a coach is like a mentor more than just the great basketball minds that they are no Um, Coach Nash, uh, let people know where you are now, what you are excited about in the next few days. Uh, meron ka bang gustong i- i-promote? Oh, wala, wala naman. No? Uh, again, I, I said earlier na nasa middle kami ng preparation. The, the, the only thing there is now for me is you know, Adamson, no? <laughs> Adams University. So we, we are entering our second season. No? So yan lang yan talaga ang meron kami and uh, this is kumbaga uh, really we're at an early stage of uh, really handling the the program so ang kailangan talaga dito is panahon eh, no and that's that's something that that's something that our coaching staff really committed into doing no really spend time uh, with our players no and again that's how you that's the only that's the only way for us to build relationships right? if you spend time with with your people so in lang kami uh, ngayon at uh, Adamson no uh, people will see us playing in uh, Phil Oil maybe and yeah. tapos uh, UAP in October okay thank you coach um coach if ever anyone wants to really you know learn about coaching about your career about your journey um is there a way they can contact you um if you're open to it Um, any 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 sort of contact that you can provide us? Yeah. Um. Ano ba ako? Uh, I'm in Twitter and ako mas social media. You no, know? I I really formed those accounts so I could follow people. No, just to <laughs> to be updated. No, cakra. Kung baga ano talaga Marites. No, para dun ako yeah. nakikibalita. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm in uh, I'm in uh, Twitter and Instagram and. What else? Ano pa ba ang mga social media? Facebook? Kaya, yeah, mga, mga ganyan. Um, SCWT Nash. Uh, that's me. Okay. Thank you, Coach. And, and last question, Coach. In one to two sentences, Coach, what for you is taking the off-beaten path? No? Similar to your career, mula corporate, naging coach, no? Para sa'yo, what for you is taking that kind of unconventional path? You know, the key is really liking, no? Li- liking what you what you do no uh, hindi Hirap ko na. hindi ko inakala na dito ako babagsak eh no? but again kanina na pag-usapan natin there was an opportunity in front of me no i i i was open i was available and ginusto ko talaga no yeah. it, it, it it's not normal no yung yung pinagdaanan ko but I, I really believe I, I also paid my dues. No? So, siguro yun ang importante. Just like, again, just like in any career that you choose. Galing, galing. Ah, thank you, everyone, uh, for listening to the show. Thank you, Coach Nash, for joining us today. Uh, if you liked our show, follow us as well in Facebook, IG, LinkedIn, and YouTube for exclusive content that's at The Project Offbeat. Kita kits the next episode and here's to taking the offbeaten path. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Coach Nas, for joining us in this show.